G'day fans, and we're back talking about the Mandalorian. Holy guacamole, there's stuff going on everywhere. Dudes popping up here and ships blowing up there. It's just it's absolutely insane. So it's Dags and MPS with you today. We're talking about the tragedy. What's the tragedy? The fact that the show's ending in the next couple of episodes. Who knows? The season's <laughs> almost at the end. MPS, oh my goodness gracious me. What did you think of the tragedy? Oh, I think it was a tragedy. It didn't go for more than 34 minutes because, quite frankly, it was a very it was the shortest episode of the season so far, and they had so much more they could have put in there. And there was some also silly bits because I have issues with people on planets and travelling. We'll get to that shortly. Yeah, very, very good. Now, the thing kicks off with good old Din playing with Grogu's head. Grogu! <laughs> Grogu! Grogu! Grogu. 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 And I'll tell you what. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, Grogu's holding on to the ball, and I could have sworn he's purring. He's like a cat. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like, dude, you're seriously loving that guy. You're you're definitely a knob, dude. What can I say? <laughs> he likes his silver ball. What can I say? And I like the fact that you know Din, as always, has to explain absolutely everything he's doing for the audience because otherwise he's just a dude like in silence, not saying anything. And he's got to bugger off to Tython. That's fine. We get a sweaty good all that. And then he says along the way, oh, yeah, sorry, Grugu, I can't train you. It's like, uh, you think? <laughs> you don't even know what the bloody force is, you knob. <laughs> Speaking of knobs, it's in your Grogu's hand. But that whole intro sequence I thought was actually very, very, very cool. And, of course, as you said, they get to Tython, which looks extremely like the outer edge of California and like Los Angeles or something. <laughs> it's like, okay, so clearly funky looking planets are out the window. It's just like, yeah, a bit of bushland, a bit of dirt, a couple of hills, and we're all good to go. <laughs> What do you reckon? Yeah, I, I, I thought it was very cute in the beginning. Um, I like how he turned around and he, and it was almost like he was saying, I am Groot. Yep. I am Groot yep. because he kept saying Grogu different ways and yep. just to see the kid's reaction. Um, and then he said, oh, it's, it's sad about, you know, your training, but, you know, we have to do what the nice lady said sort of thing. Yeah. And I was like, hang on a second. Um, she was trying to kill you in the beginning and you were enemies and now she's a nice lady. And, oh, I just, I don't know <laughs> about that. The magic rock, well, that was magic because we had no idea how that was going to occur. And it looks like someone needs a, a gym's mowing service out there because there's plants and crap all over the place. It hasn't been used in quite some time. Um, but, yeah, it was very, very sort of cute. I like the fact that he said, oh, because when you had a look at the image, you couldn't put a ship down anywhere near it. So he goes, oh, we'll, we'll have to fly with the windows down. I was like, yeah. hang on a second. That was a and very I'm thinking he's line. actually going to open the windows and yeah. go, What's he doing? And then he flies with the kid. And do you hear the kids actually kind of screaming? He's like, ah! at one point. But later on in the show, he doesn't scream when he gets lifted straight up into space. But that's it. We'll get to that issue later. So um, you see the temple, right? And it was actually kind of cool that it wasn't like the Jedi temple on Coruscant, this enormous building. It was Stonehenge, right? As soon as I saw it, I said, oh, my goodness, it's the yeah. Star Wars version of Stonehenge, you know? And I'm not the only person who's figured that out either. Some people said, oh, yeah, it's absolutely Stonehenge. He puts the kid on the on the rock in the center and says, all right, off you go, do your thing. And I like the fact that nothing really happened. But the thing that we got kind of, I thought was a little bit stupid, is that when things did happen and you got the whole beam going up and all that, three times, Good old Din tries to bust his way in. He's, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, and he gets pushed back. And it's like, dude, didn't you learn the first time? And then he does it again. And then he does it again. It's like, ah, uh, he's not going to get through. He's like, yeah, okay. He's like, quick, we've got to go. We've got to go, go. And what didn't make any sense to me is we see, you know, oh, my God, huge reveal of the Slave Wonderlands. And Din, who's never run away from anything, suddenly packs himself and says, shit, we've got to go. Kid, we've got to bail. It's like, dude, why are you packing bricks? It was just a complete different change of character. Normally you'd be saying, oh, someone's just landed. Let's go and suss it out. And if necessary, we'll use the whistling Dixies and knock them out, as you do. But uh, I, I was really I was kind of surprised by that. You see the old guy and he pulls the thing off and then he reveals it's, it's Boba Fett and you go, okay. And then you see back from last season, uh, yep. the girl that's yep. up on the, on yep. the ridge Benny, with the gun Benny. pointed at the kid. Now, if they were smart, they would have seen him trying to break into this thing and, and realise, hang on a second, if he can't walk through it, how's a laser bolt going to get through it? Uh, and then there's a standoff between the three of them. And that was a bit silly, I thought. You're sort of sitting there going, well, hang on, you put this down, you put that down, you put your rocket pack down. Yeah. Why? Um, What's the rocket pack got to do with it? 
Yeah, it's it's kind of funny when you sort of look at because we as the audience we see the slave one and the crowd and the fans would have gone, oh my god, it's a slave one, and there's a whole lot of questions like where was that parked in the five years between Return of the Jedi and and like this show? It's like you know, Boba Fett just goes back, he crawls out of the Sarlacc, and his ship just happens to be there, uh, and he didn't fly it around Tatooine. He obviously is walking everywhere because he's got his Tuscan Raider bits and pieces. But you know, let's just put all that aside. Otherwise, we'll just sit here and our brains will explode. Um, and of course, yes, he did rescue Fennec uh, in the last season and gave her the cybernetic implants for some reason. And I'm not sure if it's explained why he did that, because uh, he's always been a loner. And then suddenly he says, oh, and I'm gonna, and I need some help. So he's, he's fixed her up and all the rest of it. So he's like, OK, well, he's now a duo. So not entirely sure what the what the motivation was with that. But, you know, let's once again, let's just let's just move with it. Yeah. Um, and you're right. There's the big reveal. So uh there's been all this discussion. Yeah, it's Tamira Morrison. Is he playing Boba Fett? Yes, no, bang. It's all confirmed now. All right, it's officially canon. Boba Fett did survive the Sarlacc, right? He's crawled out somehow or other, and here he is today. And uh, maybe one day we'll, there'll be a book or a comic to explain how he got out of the Sarlacc or how long it took him to get out of the Sarlacc. For all we know, it might have been like, like two or three hours after he was got ingested, or it might have been a couple of years. And there's that whole thing about the arm. I want my armor back. Now, there'd been a long discussion for years since 2002 as to whether Django Fett was, in fact, a Mandalorian, right? And in in their circles, it was always argued he wasn't. And now, all of a sudden, he is. <laughs> I like that. He is a foundling, exactly the same as Din. So all those people for since 2002, that's like 18 years ago, have suddenly realised, oh, was it like 16 years ago, have suddenly realised, oh, hang on, we were wrong. <laughs> he is a Mandalorian. He is entitled to the armour and, and the world is good. So how would you make all that? Well, it's, it's interesting to see that it was uh Beskar as well armor that it was um Django Fett's armor that yep. Boba turned into his own colors and then it, he went from from being really cool back then as Boba Fett now he's Boba Fat oh come on you got to cut the guy some slack he's had five years you know and it's not like it's the irony is of course that Tumira Morrison never wore Boba Fett's armor once he wore Django Fett's armor but the actor never wore Boba Fett's armor. So, yeah, you got to cut a little slack, you know. <laughs> yeah. It just looked weird with the robes underneath. Yeah. It should have, he should have had the whole thing. But, you know, then there's the other point. Um, didn't leave his ship wide open so that anyone can just walk on yeah. into it. It's you like, just got to, dude, seriously, oh, if we start trying to analyse things like this, a million, especially in this particular episode, there's a whole lot of things you can go, why did they do that? Why did the stormtroopers attack that way they did? Why did the guy with a big gun just stand there firing at a rock that's rolling right towards his head? You know, there's a million things you could be asking. And it's just like, <laughs> I know, if you do that, you don't have a show. So, yeah. And it was good to see that he comes back with, I'm just a simple man making my way through the galaxy, just like his father said. Well, the cool thing about that, of course, is when he first said it, uh, Django Fett in Attack of the Clones, Boba Fett was actually in the room with him. So it's not like he just said it out of sheer coincidence. He was actually clearly paying attention as to what was going on. And uh, you're right. That was really, really, really clever. That was a nice little link there that uh, um, uh, did very, very, very well. So, yeah. And I also noticed that Boba had a dis different accent too. And you're going to laugh for that. He's kind of not having the New Zealand sort of thing anymore. It's a little bit more generic, a little bit more harsh and gravelly and I reckon it was actually kind of cool. But fans, of course, will love the fact, oh, my God, Boba Fett is back. He's in the armour. Everything is working. He's got he's got rockets going off here, and he's got knee darts going off there, and he's just going completely to town with all these technology. He's even got a hologram thing uh, on his yeah. wrist thing. Yeah, it's like, no, oh, what are the chances of that? So uh, he's, a, he's a family tree, just in case you ever need one. So uh, yeah. Yeah, that was actually kind of cool. So, yeah. And it was good to see that he said it was 20 – they put it in 25 years ago, which really puts it back to the Clone War sort of era. Yep. Uh, because the timelines and all that sort of stuff. So it fits in perfectly. You sort of sit there, like I sat there for a second and thought, hang on, 25 years ago, Jedi was back there. And I was trying to do the math. Oh, no, it's because of the actual timeline yep. in the show. So so the stormtroopers roll up. And just like they were in Rebels, utterly useless. It's like they can't shoot straight for save their lives. They are complete crap, right? And it's just ridiculous. The sequence, the fighting sequence with Fennec, it was just taking up screen time. And it's just like, even with Din and, and, and Fennec, I think it was, back to back, yeah. uh, it was, like, they're, at, they're just in the open, and the stormtroopers still can't hit them. And they're sure they're hitting um, Din and his armor's going ting, ting, ting. But Fennec wasn't wearing any armor, so it's like, she should have caught mm. some hips. So it was like, how unbelievably stupid is this? And it was just an action scene for the sake of the action scene where your heroes can't get a scratch. They can't get wounded. They can't get anything happen to them. Not even a bee sting. So um, I thought it was like annoying, actually. And uh, yeah, the uh, stormtroopers were definitely like they were in Rebels. And uh, uh, that, that was one of the weakest moments. Of the it looked good. 
It, it certainly looked good, but it was unbelievably stupid. But at least you got to see Boba Fett go completely, absolutely troppo with his gaffy stick, bashing the shit out of these stormtroopers. Like, oi, that's going to leave a mark. There's bits of helmet going off here and bits of chest, please. That was that that was worth it. Uh, yeah. to see him go completely lose it then, but uh, he was really um, uh, unleashing a bit of aggression there. What do you reckon? Yeah, look, I think the sequence went too long. It was yep. it was silly. Um, simple fact that they could have just had, you know, we saw um, stormtroopers with rocket packs in season one. So where were those stormtroopers? Yeah. But did you notice the yellow colorings in one of them that looked like the clone trooper markings? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was the mortar markings. guy, if I recall. So he's using yeah. projectile mortars now, not a laser mortar, a projectile mortar. So like, hang on, we're going back to the 20th century all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, but the dark troopers... Uh, it's kind of funny with them because we saw them being built in uh, Moff Gideon's like ship the other day. Uh, and of course, if you know, if you're a bit of a nerd, uh, it harks right back to Dark Forces, the computer game from the 1990s where something similar was actually being created there. So at least we've got an idea as to what that's all about. And then, then the silly thing is, Din puts his rocket pack down, doesn't pick it up the first time, stick it on his back. And then that just made no yeah. sense whatsoever. Again, it comes down to me mm. having a problem with you park a ship 10 miles away, yep. walk to where you got to go, then you got to walk it all back. You walk down the hill, you put the rock. That should have been the first thing he put back on his back. Because yep, totally agree. later on, you notice when he's when he's when he's landed on um and he, and he sees Kara, there's no rocket pack on him. Did he yep. forget about it after all that? Because you know, that's just silly. It's sloppy filmmaking. You yep. had you would have had far better if he had to put the rocket pack on, got to the kid, then had to fight these guys, the the dark troopers. One of them had to grab the kid, gone off. Then that would have been a far more exciting um, scene. And I and I completely agree with you. I mean, you think it was to be the first thing he would have picked up, and you know, it just saves a lot of time when you got to go places. And it's a key part of his armory and and what he does. And of course, um, we know that like when uh, Gideon's uh, dudes turn up, um, they're expecting to see Din there because they've obviously had a tracking device on his ship, but they've got no idea that Fett and Finnick are there. So you could potentially argue that the reason they got overpowered the way they did is because the troopers have walked out thinking, oh, there's only going to be one bad, one bad dude, and there's actually three. So they're overpowered in their mind anyway, even though there's plenty of guys. I mean, two ships worth of dudes you think would have been enough. But uh, it does make a great deal of sense when you think of it that way to say, okay, yeah, they weren't ready for it. And um, uh, they're obviously the, not the cream of the crop, as it were, in terms of shooting straight, as most stormtroopers are. So Yeah. And look, Fennec had... Dead to rights when she had that 50 cal in her sights, all she had to do was pull the trigger and that would have knocked out the first guy and probably blown blown the gun up. But she waits, she waits, she watches it, and then they start firing at her. It's like yep. stupid. Why wouldn't you just uh... Yeah, exactly right. Um, so another big thing, of course, is the Pearl Razor Crest gets blown up. And it was like, oh, okay. Now that was something we certainly didn't see coming. And for all the Lego builders out there who went and bought the Razor Crest model kit, just don't assemble <laughs> it at all. And you've got the current version of how, <laughs> how it looks, which is kind of funny. Uh, and the only thing that survived effectively was the Beskar spear, which you got from the last episode. Uh, and of course the knob, you know, that knob is like just going to be following us around forever. Um, so what do you think of all that? The old Razor Crest has gone tatas. Oi, that's going to leave a mark. Well, so I've actually said, Hang on, didn't he seem more upset about losing the Razor Crest than he did over losing Grogu? So anyway, what do you think of all that? Yeah, I thought that's certainly going to put a dent into his his plans because you know he had a nice ship which had a bit of space, and they're all going to now cram into Slave One, which only really had two seats, if we recall. Mm. Uh, so someone's standing in the oh no, there's the cargo bay. One of them yeah. could have been frozen for a little while. Um, yeah, no, to see the ship now completely gone, I had that same thought. All the merchandise for the Razor Crest where everyone goes, I love the ships, like, chuck it out because yeah. you don't need it anymore. It's, it's gone, bye-bye. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of ship he gets next. Maybe it'll be a cool one. Maybe it'll be, oh, well, how's this for a thought? Maybe he gets the Slave One. Yeah, some fans have thought about that and they don't agree with it. They think the Slave One has always been a FET ship, uh, whether it be Django or Boba's, and didn't should not take control of it at all. Speaking of Boba, somebody's come up with this interesting theory. In the show, Boba makes a reference to the fact that he was not, it's not a spy stream, right? He's actually looking at you know, that Gideon ship, which means um, someone's put two and two together and said, well, heck on, maybe in, Re in Return of the Jedi, once he got his payment for Han Solo being delivered, you know, he's been getting the spice, you know, it's obviously a, a narcotic, and he's been like having the wacky tobacco. And maybe that's why he was easily defeated at the Battle of Jedi, because he wasn't a completely 100% compass mentis, as it were. Uh, and maybe that's why he's a bit aggro now, because he got beaten by the fact that he was actually, you know, not 100% there. So that does actually 
work when you sit and think about it. So a yeah. sky stream. Oh, God, can't say no to one of those. What can I say? Hey, absolutely fantastic. Um, and you're right. At the end of the show, we end up back on uh, Navarro with Cara. And we don't see grief at all, which is kind of funny. So they clearly couldn't afford Carl, Carl Weathers to join us again. So they've just gone up, <laughs> get rid of him, just make Cara the, the main person. And uh, and we sort of go from there. And he's now going to try to find a way to get into the ship to get the kid back. So yeah, it's another exciting adventure for our heroes to be on. What do you reckon? Yeah. I thought that was interesting when she said, when he said, oh, I need a favorite and she says anything, I thought she would have turned around and said, well, chuck that badge out the window. I'm, I'm coming <laughs> to get the kid with you because, you know, the kid's cute and all that sort of stuff. But no, that didn't happen. So she does have some sort of moral code, whatever that might be. Yep. It seems a bit strange. Um, actually, I want to go back to the, to the deaths, to the dark okay. troopers. Yeah. Did you think, and this will be for all those who never played the video game, did you think it was like four different black Iron Mans coming down out the sky yeah. and then yeah. flying back up, you know, because yeah. it looked exactly like the same tech? Yep. And then of course, get... the biggest issue is when you introduce a new bit of technology into the timeline, you never see them ever again after that, you know, in the first order, the final order, in anybody's order, you know, it's like, okay, well, what happened to them? <laughs> so, uh, and of course, the irony of being that, you know, they're effectively droids. And it was like, well, hang on, we learned decades ago that droids aren't much chops. <laughs> It's almost like going backwards in time, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, it did look a bit like that. So, uh, oh, what can I say? Eh? Um, they get back on the ship and they put Grogu in, in the in the cell. And then I thought it was weird that Moff Gideon's standing at the front of the bridge, but he's got stormtroopers guarding him. I was like, Yeah, what do you need stormtroopers guarding you on the ship? You should be completely safe. They should yep. all be near the kid, you know, you um, don't need them in, on the bridge. Yeah, it's a good point. And the whole Gideon thing, I mean, we only first saw the ship in hyperspace. So I think it looks like animated, like it's been drawn or something. But you're right. So you see Gideon on, on the bridge and while he's walking around, he's definitely doing the whole Darth Vader impersonation, right? He's got the striding, he's got the black, he's got the cloak, the whole bit. And you are right. You don't need stormtroopers guarding you. Maybe it's an ego thing. Look, I'm so cool. I've got troopers whose sole job it is to walk around with me, even though they're on our own ship. Go figure. You're right. Cinematically, it looks good, but logically, it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so they've got Grogu, and he's having a bit of a hard day at the office. I don't know why you have stormtroopers in the room with him rather than scientists, but, you know, it is what it is. And you could see Grogu, he's, and this is not the first time in the episode, he's starting to tap into the dark side of the force here. He's getting a bit aggro. And then I thought if he kills the stormtroopers, oh, he's heading down some dark paths, but he bashes them up pretty badly because knowledge and defense, right, never for attack. And he's clearly using the force for attack. Because those guys are getting smashed and bashed everywhere, and by that point, they're not any threat, any threat to him whatsoever. So, I thought, yeah. And even I noticed, like at the very start of the show, with the knob, we know when he had his eyes shut and he's trying to get the knob, it's almost like he's pissed off, thinking I have to go over this damn knob again. Din keeps taking it off me, and I have to keep bringing it back. And I was thinking, oh, maybe, 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 you know, there's a there's a little bit of a um, tapping into the dark side there. But uh, I did like the fact that they've got Grogu captured. It's something nobody saw coming um, or the way he was going to be treated. They stun him. They put the shackles on him, his little tiny thing. And I reckon that was a good way to finish the episode, actually. What do you reckon? Yeah. Um, I think that putting shackles on a on a little kid shouldn't make any difference if he's got the force because he should be able to just do whatever. Yep. So I don't know why they did that. But Moff Gideon was very clever in, in the sense that he made him wear himself out. Yep. So he could have just, you know, stopped doing with them, grab, you know, use to say, because it seems like, like he's a battery in essence, you know, he has to, mm. once he uses all the force and he's got to use it all in one shot, then he's wiped out. Yep. So he's got to start all over again. He's got to recharge and, and get it all back up. Um, and we did see a little bit of that with Yoda in, in certain areas, especially on yep. Dagobah, he would get tired after doing that. So maybe the force has a, Yep. a time yeah. limit sort of thing, if, if you will. Uh, but, um, yeah, it was just a matter of time. And then he shows him the Darksaber. He says, do you know what this is? And it's like, probably doesn't. No, you know? you're right. Wouldn't have a clue. Exactly right. And so that means with the two Stormtroopers, they've picked out, like, who drew the short straws? So you go in there and just keep them occupied for a little while and wear, wear the little tyke out, you know? It's like, and at the start, he would have been, like, full of beans and smashing and bashing and crashing. And then slowly but surely, he's just going... <laughs> That's how you would interpret that. But... Uh, yeah, Gideon so, knows. So what, he, I mean, he's Gideon's obviously dealt with uh, Grogu before, so he knows what to expect. And uh, so clearly, you think the shackles are put on. Maybe they're force. In the, he's got no force abilities to unlock them or something. Maybe the reason, because otherwise, you're right. He should have been in a cell and all that. But yeah, they obviously know what they're doing. So, 
Yeah. Well, just just wait till you buy the child in toy form and you put the batteries in him and he's go, ah, 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 and then eventually the battery goes, <laughs> you know, oh, it's just like in the show. Well, he does look very cute when he sleeps. That's for sure. He just goes, he leans over and he's like, <laughs> it's, it's nine eye time for Grogu. So. <laughs> and um, I noticed he didn't. I noticed he didn't scream when the dark troopers took him up. Like he fl- he screams when when yeah. Dean's flying him, but the others. So it must be like economy yeah. and first class. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the last thing that uh, I thought was actually quite interesting, and yeah, right, because Grogu's having a hard day at the office, someone actually did say, "Did you ever hear the tragedy of Grogu the youngling?" <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, one of the key discussion points that is now coming up, Boba Fett is now on the scene, you know, has been this fan fan favorite for decades and Din is clearly the star of the show. So what is going to happen now? Is there going to be a fan division as to who they're supporting more? So at this time of the entire TV series for the season and a season and a half, Din has been the main cool puppy, but the fan favorite has come back. Now, whether the fan favorite lives up to expectations as anybody's guess, he's got the uniform on the helmet. He's like, he's just doing his thing. And some people are now wondering, will Din's fan popularity now drop off because people just shift allegiances to Boba Fett or what will happen? So they've set the show up in a very interesting sort of conundrum, as it were, because ultimately, if the show is called The Mandalorian, you could be asking yourself, well, which Mandalorian is it? Because even though, technically speaking, uh, Boba Fett is a Camino, it comes from Camino. You can, if you want to you know, split a few heads, you could say, well, he's Mandalorian too. Yeah, you know, from lineage. Um, effectively, it's like, well, which one are we talking about here? So uh, it's very, very interesting because you could easy, easily at now kill Din off and just have Boba Fett continue on. And then suddenly it's the adventures of Boba Fett, the Mandalorian, and you've got a whole brand new show and fans are going to go, oh my God, it's it's the, 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 the bounty hunter we've always wanted to see in live action again since Return of the Jedi. So watch this space. What do you reckon? Well, look, it's called the Mandalorian and we've seen a lot of them. We saw Bo-Katan, couple episodes ago and a few of the people we've now seen boba fett come back it'll be nice to see him in full costume again the way he looked originally because it just looked weird with the black yeah robes underneath exactly right so we need to rate this episode in helmets boba fett helmets ironically enough uh which is kind of uh <laughs> kind of poetic when you think about it so mps what did you think of the tragedy well look it wasn't a it wasn't one with darth plagueis so <laughs> I thought after the end, at the end of the day, I give it four helmets. The simple fact that it had a lot of weak points, but it had some really good, oh my God moments. And that sort of counterbalanced there. You know, we confirmed it was fair. We confirmed it was slave one. We confirmed that the armor was all there. And the fact that the kid's now in trouble again, and it's not just a hero or villain of the week type of, of show. Um, but again, the, as we said, some of the fights with the stormtroopers was just, and some of the things were just pointless. So, uh, yeah, four helmets. Yeah, I got to think this is definitely one of the better episodes that we've seen in quite some time. Uh, the reveals were very, very good, and some filling in the backstory from Boba Fett was really good because there was like clearly some questions to be answered there, and they've actually figured that part out. I agree with you. The stormtrooper fight scene was just filler. It was meaningless. I mean, the ones again, Fennec, absolutely not, didn't like it at all, really. It was, yeah, sure, it's entertaining, but it's stupid at the same time. But Bobo uh, going completely nuts. So uh, with the gaffy stick on the Stormtroopers, was actually quite good. Uh, worked really, really well. And I do like the fact that it's not always easy going. I mean, most of our guys, they have an easy run of these shows. They come in, they do their thing, they leave, right? And this time, Grogu has been captured. He actually is having a hard day at the office. He's actually being tormented by the bad guys. And I thought, it's nice to see a bit of a change in uh, getting everybody out of their comfort zone effectively and just doing something a little bit different. You know, that he's with the bad guys. It's one of those, oh, how are they going to fix this moment up? You know, what's going to happen now? And I actually quite like that because it's something a little bit different. Everything we've seen recently has just been a little bit too easy, cut and dry, you know, cookie cutter, colour my number scenario. And that's what I think sort of really dialed in for me. So uh, it was definitely one worth watching it wasn't 100 was not 100 predictable which i guess is unlike last week which was so i went for four and a half helmets on this one i think is one of the best episodes i've seen in quite a while and uh, i quite enjoyed it so uh, and i actually was then sitting there thinking okay what's going to happen now and when you can do that when you're not 100 percent sure what's coming up then you know the show's won when you know like last week oh it's the 
you know, Din versus the the gunsling at the other end. Well, you already know what's going to happen. So it's like it's like a move fast forward through that. So uh, yeah, it was really really good. So yeah, the, the so the tragedy uh, wasn't necessarily a tragedy after all. It was actually something like, oh my god, it's actually very exciting, very very cool. And of course, we're all wondering what's going to happen now. Oh my goodness, the slave one's got Boba Fett, it's got Fennec, it's got Din, and there's no kid. Oh my god, but they've still got the knob. That's always important to make sure you got your knob. So uh, where we go, don't go without your knob. So any final words before we uh, wrap this one up there, MPS? I was just thinking when you were talking there, the way to fix this episode would have been to have eight dark troopers land and have to fight them rather than stormtroopers. That would have made it far more yep. harder. And therefore knowing that they've, they've got the kid was a, was an actual, um, yep. was a harder task. So yeah, maybe for next time guys, when you write the show, make it like that yep. rather than sticking 400 yep. stormtroopers, you can just use a cannon fighter. Other than that, no, I think we just have to wait and see what happens next week. Yep, totally agree. Stormtroopers need to be more of a credible threat, but uh, you're right indeed. So it's only a few more days, only two episodes left at the end of the season. Oh, you can see things are starting to build up. Oh, it's going to happen with the Grogu. Oh, he's up oh, no, the office support kid. Anyway, we need to buzz off. We'll see you uh, next week uh, for a bit of Star Wars action. So in the interim, make sure you keep on warsing on. What else can you say? Okay, bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.